Right, welcome to the webinar. My name is Daryl Martin. I'm a trader just like you. Okay. Um, I ha I own ApexInvesting.com. It's a trading community. Just traders. It's a bunch of traders it's helping traders. Traders who leave the rooms. Traders answer on the forums, post replies. A lot of free trading tools. Uh, but I'm from I'm, I'm from ApexInvesting.com. Um, I love trading Nadex. I trade it pretty much every day. Um, and this is a Nadex application and strategy webinar series for you. So uh, first thing we got, we got to throw up those fun little uh, risk disclosures. And, um, you know, obviously trading involves risk. Make sure you know what you do and before you do it. Uh, this is unique information provided by Apex Investing. And uh, then the uh, full risk disclosure, futures, options, swaps, etc. involve risk. They may not be suitable for every investor. They, you know, may result in a financial loss. A decision you make is, again, on you because it's your decision that you're making. Um, past performance not indicative of future performance. And the one thing I always point out is you don't see any clause on here regarding Nadex uh, where you can lose more than what's in your account because every trade you do on Nadex is capped risk. So you can't get margin call saying you need to deposit more money into your account because you're negative, which can happen on leveraged uh, margin futures, Forex, even stock, um, and a variety of option strategies. But uh, not on Nadex. Every trade is fully collateralized on both sides. Uh, before you hop over to our website, I want you to real quick to hop on to Nadex.com, especially anybody who answered they don't have a demo account. Okay? So if you don't have a demo, if you have a live and don't have a demo, or if you just don't have a demo, period, go to Nadex.com, click on Trading Demo Trading Account. And fill in that form literally right now. Okay? Uh, takes 10 seconds. You know, first name, last name, whatever username you want to use. Make it short, so that way you can use it. Like if you have a, an Android phone or whatever, there's a limit in characters, so make it as short as you can. But uh, username, first name, last name, phone number, email address. Click Apply for Demo. Check your email right away, and you'll be able to log directly in up here into the Nadex platform, and you'll have a demo account with like $25,000 of funny money in there. You can go, you know, go have fun. But um, that's really not the point of the demo. It's not just to throw random things on and see what happens. Um, it's to get a feel for, you know, obviously what the market is and actually see as you're learning. It makes a lot more sense if you can see it. But more than anything, it's so you can refine your skills. It's practice. It's not practice that doesn't matter. Just like I talk about in any kind of professional sport, you know, you practice before the game so that when it counts with the game, it's muscle memory. You know where you want to get in, where you want to get out, how you want to trail your stops, what contract you want to choose, you know, why this and why that happens, how everything happens from beginning to end. You don't want to be asking questions in the middle of live trades. You should know the answers before you hit the entry button. You should know all the other decisions after that that you're going to make based on what you see on the chart. Um, you should not be trading just on Nadex in, in the sense of just based on what you see on, better way to put it, on what you see on the Nadex platform, okay? You should not be going, well, I, you know, I like this watch list. I like these expiring soons, or, you know, I like this U.S. tech uh, daily, and I'm just going to find out the price I want. And, you know, or, you know, I'm going to look at a general chart, maybe pull up an indicative, and, uh, you know, look at Forex, and, you know, let's pull up U.S. yen, and, okay, I'm going to click on that. I'm going to open up one of their charts over here, and uh, if, I, if I see it sort of going up or going down, I'm just going to buy or sell. Yeah, um, what do you expect to happen? If you don't know what you expect to happen, you're just sort of trading it, you're just sort of filling it, you're sort of playing with your gut. Trading demo. <laughs> um, it's a very uh, nice teacher. Um, it's not an expensive teacher. Live is an expensive teacher. Um, don't let the need for income make you lose what capital you have to trade with by hopping in and not knowing what you're doing. Um, don't make greed of just wanting to make it now, make you jump ahead. There is definitely a live component when it comes to risk management, when it comes to emotion. Most emotion can be controlled by proper risk management. Um, if you don't have enough money, you know, save the money up, all right, um, and practice in demos. So when you do have it, you don't give it all away by just doing silly mistakes that you had no idea were there. Um, ask a lot of questions. Now, you want to get that demo extended, so what could you do? How can you get extended so it doesn't expire in two weeks? Hop on over to open up an account for free. And open up a trading account. It takes about five, maybe ten minutes, depending on how fast you type, um, to open this up and fund it. 
You can fund it with ten thousand dollars. Well, I guess online you can fund it with like what five hundred the first time, then a thousand after that, and you wire money in. Uh, but I mean, you can fund it with just a hundred bucks. You put a hundred dollars in there. You put five hundred dollars in there. Whatever, thousand dollars in there. Five thousand. I don't care what you want to do. But if you fund it with a minimum of a hundred dollars, and you place a trade, okay then you should be able to contact them to get extended if you placed a live trade. Uh, now, their policies, you know, that's not my policy, so they could be updating. They could update their policy at any given time. Um, but uh, I know that before, at least, I don't know what it is today. I, obviously, I've had mine for a while. But with a funded account and a live trade is how they have done in the past. Uh, so, you know, again, you can check with them on their current policy, but... Um, let's see here. And I always have somebody who says um, it's not working. <laughs> Audio is working. Um, but anyway, so you know, check on that, and uh, you can see what they do, and you know what the rep says, and everything else. But just get it demo, and um, really highly recommend that you get that going. And uh, if you find out anything different, let me know. If it's impacting you in a way, let me know. I love to give uh, feedback to Nadex. I want you to get feedback to Nadex. Everybody should get feedback because they are committed to making an exchange that is beneficial to everybody. Um, but go ahead and, you know, get that demo open, you know, get that live going. Um, so that way you can do that. Let's see. Um, and then I got one other person asking a quick question. So we can move forward. Um, okay, so to get on topic, now that we got that knocked out, also hop on over to apexinvesting.com. Um, right here. And what you're going to see is on the right side, there's a sign up for free button. It's where this recorded webinar is going to be. It's where our live uh, free binary scanner and spread scanner is located. We're going to be talking about that a little bit tonight. It's um, where we have daily deviation levels, like basically support resistance levels. Um, it also is where we're going to post um, like the forum, so you have an area to ask a lot of questions. So there's tools. Um, you know, obviously, there's other services, but there's tools that are free on the website. There's a ton, hundreds of hours of education for free on the website, and um, even basic. So those of you who are brand new and are looking um, you know, to basically find a place to get the basics down and to take it a step further. We have all that for you. So just click on Get Free Access, sign up, takes a minute, and then log on in to the website. And once you log in, let me uh, just give you a quick review of where you're going to want to go to find some stuff. Under Education, we're going to have Education. Okay, I have a live radio show every day, the live show, the archives are there. Um, what a helpful links. We got an intro to various markets, so like, what is a future? What is Forks? Maybe you're due to Nadex, but you're also due to Futures and Forks. You don't even know what that means. So you can go there and learn about that. Uh, webinar recordings. This is where we're going to post today's webinar. So right in here under Webinar, Bonus Webinars 3. So 3 is the newest ones. So when we add 4, 4 will be the newest ones. Okay? And Thursdays, we do webinars every Thursday, uh, just about every Thursday. You can click on Weekly Webinars over here on the right side if you'd like to attend one of those. They're free to attend. And then Nadex tutorial videos, getting started with Nadex, how to use the platform to correctly enter an order in a take profit order, enter a limit order, edit an order, cancel an order, find a contract, all the basics on the platform right there. Uh, we got spreads. And we have, um, you know, and these are like, 50, a lot of these are 15 minute videos, like real short videos. Some of them are longer ones where I've went into more detail on spreads and binaries. But you can get all your basics down really solid right here, okay? Uh, we also have the scanner, which has several things on it for you. Um, but one of those like, is going to be the binary scanner. We're going to talk about that today. So right here in the binary scanner, um, you'll it'll prompt you if you want to install the plugin, so that way you can actually place trades directly from it. So if I go down here and make sure I'm on demo for a second, and I you know click an order, then it'll actually pop up the demo ticket for me. Okay. So we'll talk a little bit more about this. Uh, the deviation levels are here. Um, what contract should I be looking at? It's right under Nadex information. So it's like the calendar, like we just had this weekend, we just rolled crude and all the U.S. indices. Um, so you should have, you should be on the new contract. You should be on August 14 for crude oil. You should be on September for S and like ES and NQ and TF and YM. All that's right here. Um, we just now rolled. 
uh, corn and soybeans and all that. So they're actually going to be now on the, what is it, uh, December, yeah, for corn and soybeans. Uh, and that happened, like, at 6 o'clock. So, uh, so when they open up a little bit later, then we'll see that. And then we'll also see the rolls for, you know, backs and footsie when they open up. But uh, anyway, so check those out. And then we'll have uh, current underlyings. And uh, it shows you basically what every contract is on at this moment. Of course, it'll update. Like, DAX will update right now to 09.14 when it opens at 3 a.m. But uh, so just make sure you uh, look at that. And that's it. Here's the ninja symbols. Here's, like, the thinkorswim symbols. On thinkorswim, you put a forward slash in front of any symbol. Um, if you're using currency futures at all um, for maybe, like, volume, like how we use it, then, you know, there's the roll date for currency futures. Uh, tutorials. How do I use this thing? So we just made a brand new one on the spread scanner. We're going to make another brand new course on the binary scanner. But if you go over here to how to use the spread scanner, I made a whole course from beginning to end on exactly how to do it, step by step. Okay, so step one, step two, step three, just follow them in that order. When you go there, you're going to see that there's a video right inside that section. It's like 14 minutes. So, um, and it'll... Uh, It'll make it a lot easier for you. So we're going, we're cleaning that up. We actually just uploaded that. We haven't made it to an official course yet. So we're cleaning it up. There may be a couple things we've got to fix up in there, but we just made that Thursday. We'll have that cleaned up here in the next couple of days. And then we're going to upload another one on um, this coming Thursday on the binary one. We already, we already have tutorials, but we want to do a sort of a breakdown. So it wasn't like a two-hour webinar. It was a you know, series of 15-minute videos on each section. So if you want to go back and find one thing, you can. Um, Okay, so got that out of the way. Now let's talk about what we're going to talk about. Um, tonight we're going to focus on, and I'll, I'll do some various questions for you as well, um, if they're off topic, and it'll be at the end, okay? I want to try to keep it on topic, otherwise the webinar takes, you know, hours. And um, I don't mind, but I know some of y'all don't want to miss anything, and I want to be respectful of your time there. Uh, we're talking about in the money and out of the money binary strategies. We're talking about what is in the money and at the money and out of the money. Pretty simple, but just to make sure everybody's on the same page. Um, how are binary options priced? You know, what affects that price? Um, how to quickly find the best opportunity in seconds? Uh, like, what binary do you want to, like, you got a signal, now what do you do? Um, what is time decay? Uh, what is premium? You know, how does it, you know, help you or, you know, work against you? Um, and then, you know, we're talk, we'll talk about a couple strategies as well. Maybe pull it up, see if we have a trade. Um, do the limited scope and nature of the webinar. I don't know how many trades we'll be able to do, but I can at least show you how I pick some trades, okay? Like, I'll bring up some of my charts and show you exactly what I do and how I do it. For choosing, on the exact same strategy, do I choose an at the money? Do I choose an in the money? Do I choose an out of the money? And I'll show you uh, some ways that I do that. All right, so that sound good? If so, we'll go ahead and uh, get it going. Um, all right, so we got the survey knocked out. Everybody knows where to find the new information if you're brand new. Okay, I'm not going to be going over just all the basics. If you're brand new, you know where to go to get that information. Um, most brokers only offer sort of what I basically what you call an at-the-money binary. Nadex is not a broker. So don't confuse them with an international binary broker. They're not trading it against you. Um, and they're an actual exchange with an actual contract. Versus a, where's the price at right now? Let's make a deal for five minutes from now. Okay? It's, these are the binaries. This is how wide they are. This is the width in between them. This is the actual defined contract every single time. And Nadex offers out of the money, in the money, and at the money binaries. They allow you to close your trade before expiration so you don't have to hold it. And that is probably one of the biggest steps. I've proven time and time again that that is a requirement. Okay? For a successful system. But once you understand the probabilities and how they work, we'll talk about that some. You have to close before expiration. It like otherwise the best thing is break even, less a little bit. Okay. Um, and every binary is both out of the money and in the money at the exact same time. And what do I mean by that? Well, you know the long may be in the money. If the long's in the money, if you, the buy side's in the money, then the sell side is the out of the money. If the sell's in the money, then the buy side's in the money. There's no tie. Okay, it's either in the money or out of the money. So what is at the money then? At the money really is just saying that the strike and the price of the underlying are like right at the same price. Um, and so 
if you hold a binary to expiration, you must be in the money. So let's go ahead and bring up some binaries and let's talk about what that means. What is all this in the money, at the money, out of the money stuff? Let's knock that out. Okay, so right over here, we uh, load up the binary scanner. And again, this is free for you to access over at Apex Investing. Cost nothing, okay? Uh, and if we pull up, uh, well, I don't know, say US Yen. And don't let all the stuff intimidate you. You know, just go through the videos. You'll be amazed how easy this is to use once you go through them. But first thing, just have no filters on. Just choose your market. And th what this will do is it'll show you every binary contract that currently is trading on the US Yen. Now, I could also choose Aussie Dollar, and I could see both of them. I have to scroll a lot. You know, this without doing any filters. But I can look at as many contracts as I want at the exact same time. Okay? So now if we go on down, we look at US Yen. Let's talk about this whole in the money, at the money, out of the money thing. The technical definition for at the money is when the underlying market is at the exact same price as the strike. Okay? So if the market is at 101.84, then it'd be an at the money binary. To generalize that up a little bit more, what I've done is I basically said usually, you know, uh, actually always, the price is going to be at 50 bucks on the mid price if the market's right at that. I mean, you could give or take a tick, but be right at $50 on the mid price. What's the mid price? It's the middle between the bid and the ask. So if I go over here and I open up US Yen, look at current expirations, like the mid is, if you took the middle price of the bid and the offer. If you added those together and divided them by two, what would be the middle price? When a market is at that price, then the binary will be worth 50 bucks. So when the binary is at 101.83, it'll be worth $50. And it's really close right now. Okay, it's 101, you know, 836, sort of ticking up, ticking down. Now, couple things I want to teach you on this. When I say $50, I mean the middle price. So there's going to be a bid and an offer. So the bid and offers are usually tighter when the market's more liquid, like in the mornings. Okay. But bid and offer right there. The binary price is not based on the indicative. It is based on the underlying market. Okay. So based on the actual underlying market, not the indicative. Settlement, which is basically the same formula as the indicative is what determines whether or not it's in the money at expiration. This is why looking at the indicative alone is not enough. Because if the underlying market moves a few ticks, but the indicative hasn't moved because of how it's calculated, then you'll be a little confused about why it's not at 50 when the market's at that price. Okay? So you want to see the actual underlying market. Now, some people go, well, I don't have access to charts, or hey, I'm using these charts. I got these web-based charts off this website or that website or whatever. No, you need real charts. Okay, actual platform with futures and with Forex and with live data. Even if you just trade Forex, you need futures. Why? Because a lot of people love MetaTrader 4. All right? There is an issue with MetaTrader 4 that's not talked about much in the MetaTrader 4 community, and that's the inaccuracy and the lacking of volume. They don't have any volume. People go, well, you can't have volume for Forex because it's over the counter and all that. You can't have volume for Forex. You need volume when you trade. Volume tells you, like, there's three things that matter. How far is something going to move? What is the price action? What is the volume? You can't have, you don't want to have two of the three legs of a stool which are going to fall over, okay? Your trading plan is going to fall over. You want to have that volume. You can use the Euro dollar futures volume on, like 6E, on the Euro dollar. Um, we have one, one of our indicators actually does all that for you. But, I mean, you can just open up two charts. You can put them side by side. There's a lot of ways you can do it. But you need futures, Forex volume to get real volume. The volume you may see on, like, say, an MT4 platform is going to show you tick volume. That's how many times the market has changed price during that bar. That's not actually how many contracts have traded. And you need an exchange to pull that data from, not just a specific broker. So you really need a real platform with futures and Forex volume. That doesn't have to cost you a penny. Okay, um, under our first um, course right here, we have getting started and set up with Ninja Trader. We show you how to set up Ninja, how to get free futures data, how to get free course data, live data, historical data, volume, all that stuff that you need. We show you how to go get it for free right there. So you have no excuse. 
takes you about 30 minutes, okay? And that's if you watch every video and follow the steps while you're going along. It takes about 30 minutes. And you're set up and you're ready and you're starting to actually progress towards being a real trader, okay? Setting yourself up for success. All right, so that's just an important note on indicative. Um, and then, uh, let's see, let's look at this right here. So what's that? we got the at the money down. At the money is when the market is at the price. Then there'll be a little bit of bitter ask. And we talked about how the price will always be at 50 plus bitter ask, maybe 53, 47, maybe 55, 45, maybe tighter, maybe wider, depending upon the market. This is important due to the first question that popped up in the uh, webinar, Richard. Uh, posted, how do I know when to get out of a call option when it is close to the strike price? A uh, couple things for you. One, I want to help you out on this because I know the term call and put option comes from over-the-counter binaries, so you probably have some experience trading those. They're not call or put options. It's an inaccurate statement made for marketing. Um, a call option is an option where the buyer has the right but not the obligation to call something away from somebody at a certain price by a certain date. Put option is you have the right to put, like, stock or gold or whatever to somebody. They have to buy it from you at a certain price by a certain date. Call does not necessarily just mean up because you can do a bull call spread, right? You can do a bear call spread. So call and put doesn't necessarily define up or down, and it's not a call or put because there's no calling or putting. It's just cash, settlement, no exercise, open or close. So it'll just it'll settle. There's not an exercise built in. Um and it's not a big deal. It's, you know, you call it, you know, technical, whatever, you know. Uh, but just so you know, like it's not actually a call or put. So if I'm long a binary or if I'm short a binary or a spread, a binary will always be at that price. So let's say you bought a contract, Richard, at 20 bucks, And let's say, you know, you went over here. Let's go ahead and uh, widen this back out. And uh, this applies to really the at the money to get everything down. There we go. Reset those filters. Okay, so let's say you bought this contract for $8. You thought that um, the USC was going to go up by five ticks in the next 35 minutes. Okay, not a massive move. If it does, if the US tick moves up to 101.89, Richard, what will the mid price of that binary be? So you can tell me exactly what price, you know, anybody, what would the price of that be? What would, the, what would this binary be worth if the market moved up to 101.89? There we go. Yep, right about 50 bucks. Okay? So not 100. Lorenzo, we're not talking about actually that you lose. It would never be worth $100, Lorenzo, uh, if it just went to 101.89 because we bought it. So it will be worth 50. Okay, $50. And then plus or minus bid ask spread. We can go, what is bid ask spread on this instrument? Uh, it's about 650. Okay, so let's add like to say four bucks to both sides to be safe. So we'll just say fifty-four by forty-six. Okay, and so if you bought that for eight bucks, if you want to sell like right when it hit one hundred eighty-nine, you can basically sell it for forty-six. Now I use a different rule called forty-three fifty-seven because what if it gets to like one hundred one eighty-eight five, like a tenth of a tick, like five tenths of a tick away? It doesn't quite hit forty-six, right? So I, what I do is when I buy my out-of-the-money binaries, I'll sell them at 43, okay, as, as if I'm targeting a price for exit. When I sell my, I'm oh, sorry, yeah, when I sell my out-of-the-money binaries, like say if I sold one down here at $92, okay, the market went down to 101.79, I'd buy it back for 57. So I give myself a few dollars there. Yeah, I'm giving up a few bucks, but I don't want to be up like $40 on this trade and give it all back just because I wanted that last two bucks. Like, is that last two or three dollars really worth the 30 or 40 you just made? Not really. So, 43 by 57 is my rule. So what you do, Richard, is you actually put in a order, if you're buying, if you're long, to exit, if you want to exit when you hit the strike, we'll get 43 is the rule that I use, okay? Um, if I sold, I'd, I'd put an order in to buy it back, I get 57. So a question comes up, and this is a great question by Selena here. She says, why is it 50 bucks? Well, that comes back to why, how a binary is priced, and it comes with why you have to actually close them before expiration on a successful plan. They're priced at 50 because a binary is reflective of the probability of that contract expiring in the money. Okay? 
So what this price is telling you is that there is an 8% probability that the US yen will expire greater than 101.89. When you buy, you're saying that the statement is true. What is the statement? The statement is the US yen will expire than greater than 101.89 at 8 p.m. Eastern time tonight. If it expires at 101.89, and you held that contract, would it be profitable or would it lose? If you were a buyer of the binary, would it be profitable or a losing trade if it expired at 101.89? Who can tell me? It'd be a losing trade. So if I bought 101.89 and I held it to expiration and it expired at 101.89, it's not greater than 101.89. Okay, it has to be greater than 101.89. If I sold it and I held it to expiration, it has to be less than or equal to the strike. So if I sold this one for $92, it has to be less than or equal to 101.79. The mirror said there's no ties, right? It's either greater than or it's less than or equal to. So buy side, greater than. Sell side, less than or equal to. So it's telling me probability. So what is the probability? If the market is at, let's just let's see if we can find maybe a better fifty dollar example. When the market's opened up, they're starting to move around a little bit. Um, yeah, we can't. We'll just focus on this one for the moment. Right now, the contract is at. Okay, it's showing one one eighty four. So that means I actually need to open up a U.S. yen chart. Let's grab it. These will be some good lessons right here. Notice our contract is 101.84, but our indicative is 101.8395 or 101.84, sort of going back and forth. And then let me go over here and let me make this larger so you can actually see it. Okay, 101.91. See, the indicative, remember I told you, like, the price is based on the underlying market, not the indicative, so the indicative is not sufficient for you to be watching for your charts. The indicative is showing it's basically right at the money. It's right at 101.84. But look at the price. It's at 60 to 69. But, Daryl, you said it was going to be at 50 when it was at the market. It's not at the market. The U.S. yen is at 101.91, or right over here. Oh, it is at 101.84. Okay, well, so it's fluctuating. <laughs> there we go. Okay, it's coming back down. Um, but it'll, it'll fluctuate. If I go down to tenths of ticks, which is if I want to get really detailed, because that's actually what they're measuring. And notice how they have the expansion out there. It's a little bit above that. I can actually go into my platform, and I don't recommend that you do this, okay, because it'll mess up all sorts of things. But uh, go in on here, and I just, I'm going to show you this. Don't do this. It'll mess up all sorts of indicators, okay? Um, and let's see. One of the options you can actually choose to have your data showing like tenths of ticks. There we go. And so now I can actually see like where the, the, the detail of the price is. Okay? So right there, you know, I have to reload the chart. But right there, like 101, you know, 82.5, 82.9. So it's fluctuating up and down, getting that live price. Okay? So, but just to not worry about all the complexities, not digging into that too deep. Let's just say that the US yen is perfectly priced at 101.84. Let's say the price is at, you know, 45 by 55 at this given second. What is the probability if the market is wherever the market is, regardless, let's do this, regardless of where the market is? The market's at 101, say 84. Okay. What is the probability? that it's still going to be at 101.84 in five minutes or five hours or five days. If it's at that price right now, this will help you a lot if you'll grasp this. What if the probability will still be there? Is there, good, is there a greater probability it will be higher than it will be lower than where it is right now? And I'm not saying, like, based on your system. I'm just saying the market itself. This probability is going to move, but is the prob what's the probability that it will move higher 
versus lower? Is there like a 70% probability it'll be higher than it is lower? Because if there's 70% probability it'll be higher, then 30% probability it'll be lower. So what is the probability it'll either be higher or the probability it'll be lower? Not either one. It's 50-50. Yeah. It's basically a 50-50 probability. So good job there, Josh. That it'll be at the exact same price. Right? Because it, until it moves, like, there's nothing. <laughs> so there's a 50-50 chance it'll still be there. Whether there's five minutes or five hours or five days until expiration. So it's sort of a trick question, but actually it's the answer to a question, which is why is it priced at 50? Because there's a 50-50 probability, it'll still be there. Does that make sense? Now, I had a trader the other day come in and ask a question saying, well then, that means buying it out of the money binary means it has a low probability of profiting. Right? If I buy a $20 binary or an $8 binary, it has a low probability of making a profit. Because that only has a 20% chance or only an 8% chance of being profitable. Okay? So, my question for you is, that is the probability of it expiring in the money. Right? That's not a probability of it going up or down in between this. It's a probability of it still being at the same price. So you could buy a 20, and maybe there is only a 20% probability it will expire in the money, but it may go up to it and come back down. It may go up from 8 and become worth 24, never even get to 50, never even get to the strike, and then come back down. Was the trade still profitable if you would have bought at 8 and sold at 24, and it never reached the price? Is that still a profitable trade? If you buy at 8 and sell at $24, did you make money? Okay, so it's not a probability of profiting which is important for you to understand. Otherwise, you're like, well, I'll just buy the 95s all the time because, you know, or whatever. I mean, it's not a probability of profit. It's a probability of, pro of it being profiting if you held it to expiration and being in the money. Okay? So let me show you. This is really essential. Um, I had a great forum post the, uh, this weekend where trade had some misconceptions, common misconceptions, not unique at all. And we, we, we talked about back and forth on some of this stuff. And a uh, real long reply over in the forum. But um, let's check this out. If I have 100 trades, so trades, you know, total, I got 100 of them, all right? Now let's say I win, and we have profitable, I guess, whatever, and losses, okay? Profitable trades, losing trades. And let's say I buy $70 ones. What is their probability of expiring in the money? If I buy a $70 binary, what's its probability of being in the money? 70%. What's its probability of not being in the money? 30%. Okay, cool. So it's on the buy side. All right. So that means 70% of these trades should be profitable. 30% should lose. Right? Now, if 70 of them are profitable, and I bought it at 70 so this is sort of a rolling back a little bit for you. When you buy a binary, the price you buy it for is your risk. When you buy, it's the buy rule. That's how it works. When you buy a binary, the price you buy it for is your risk. So if I bought it for $70, my risk is how much? 70 bucks. The most a single binary is worth, now you can do 1, 10, 50, 100, whatever, but the most a single binary is worth is how much? All binaries, exact same value on Nadex. $100. So, if I'm risking 70, what is the most I can make on the trade if I held the trade till expiration? 30 bucks, exactly. Okay, so I get to say, let's do $100 minus what I'm risking, okay, because that's what I'd make on the trade. And then we go over here and it's like, okay, what if I lose? Well, let's do probably what I paid, okay? times the amount of trades. Uh, and then let's, uh, we got to add that in. Don't we? Let's multiply it times how often we won. And then we'll uh, put negative one in here for 
losses. How much did we make on your trade? What's your net profit? We bought 70, we bought $170 binaries and 71 and 30 lost. Money with probabilities, how much do I end up making? I break even less whatever my cost is, right? Because if I did 100 trades and I got, you know, that in fees. So I broke even on my trades, but I had a little cost on my, you know, I don't have bid-ass spread. Because if you don't exit the trade, you don't pay the bid-ass spread, right? Because you buy at 70. If you, I mean, if you try to close before, there's a $5 bid-ass spread, you can only make 25, right? To get out at 95. But if you hold it, you can make 30. So you don't have bid-ass spread on the exit. But you do have it, you do have the fees, no matter what. Um, you only have half the fees on the losing side, you have more fees on the winning side. But hopefully, if your trading system is coming down to fees, you have a problem with your trading system. <laughs> it should not a dollar or two should not make the, the the difference. It definitely can be a significant impact, but it should not be the make or break factor. Okay? If that's the only thing holding you back, then you're on a good line and now we just need to figure out how to tweak it a little bit. Okay? So we'll do this right here. And then let me drop the dollar signs because this is our percent. Okay, so I don't want to make it percent because then it makes the formula weird. But if I go in here, just make this the number. And we'll get rid of some decimals. The reason I'm going to change this up for you a little bit. And we'll go in here and we put, yeah, we'll just leave that. All right. Um, so percent, yeah, profitable, losing, we'll say, you know, cost, whatever. Um, now, if I go in here and I do a $80 binary with $20 profit potential, same thing. If I do a $50 binary with $50 profit potential, same thing. If I do a $30 binary with $70 profit potential, same thing. It doesn't matter if I'm in the money or if I'm out of the money, it's fairly priced. Now, people go, wait a minute, well, that feels like it's rigged. Or whatever. I, I hear that. No, 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 that's fair, okay? If I'm risking 30 bucks and the market has to move to get greater than my strike because it's already lower than it, so I have to wait on it to get up there, I have a lower probability of it expiring in the money. So I pay less and I have a chance to make more. On the other hand, if you buy that, you know, if you're on the other side of that trade, you got a 70% probability of being profitable. It's already, the market's already above my strike. It doesn't have to, at expiration, profitable at expiration, because the market doesn't have to move. It can stay flat. It can move up. Okay? It can move down a little bit. You can still make money. So you have a higher probability of being profitable at expiration. Therefore, you have a higher risk and a lower profit. So those who take on the risk of movement can make more money. Those who take on, who don't want to take on that risk of movement and just want to collect what we call premium, we'll talk about, they end up putting up a little bit more money because they've increased their probability of expiring in the money. So it's fair. It's on both sides. You can remember, it's not like you're not trading against Nadex. They're not making the market, okay? They just put the contracts out, and they bring together buyers and sellers. Those may be traders, maybe other market makers, but Nadex is not on the other side of your trade. The market maker is not here to make 70 bucks when you, you know, lose 70, to make 30 when you lose 30. They want to hand off the trade. They want to hedge off the trade, okay? They don't want to worry about how good of a trader you are. They're regulated. They don't even get to know who you are. That's a big thing about regulation. They don't know who's on the other side of the trade. They don't know if you're getting in. They don't know if you're getting out. They don't know if you're taking profit. They don't know if you just took a loss. They have no idea. They just see a trade. They want to make the bid offer spread. So they want to buy the people who are selling, and they want to sell the people who are buying, and that bid ask spread isn't there to give them enough time to be able to unload that trade on the other side. They're not there to trade against you. So... Understanding this fact helps you understand real quick why just buying and holding a binary and just leaving it on and being lazy and just letting it go doesn't work. It may work for a little while, right? You might get like, you might win 60 trades and then lose 40. You might win 30, lose 10, win 30, lose 10, lose 10, you know, win 10, lose 10, you know, whatever. So, I mean, it could go like, I mean, any, any way that number could go. So it's like you might get on this lucky streak and it, it works for you. Then you lose, you know, a good chunk of it, but then it works for you. Then you lose a little bit. And then it's, you know, 
you got to have an exit plan. Okay? I don't care if you're in the money or you're out of the money. you got to have an exit plan. Even on my at the monies, I take profit and get out. Okay? So it's not a percent of probability of profiting. It's a percent probability of it expiring in the money. Does that help out? Because I'm sure that goes over a little bit of a concept with you. Okay. Um, now, I don't know why you say such little profit with 50%. So you have, to re, you have to give me a little more details, Brian, on what you're talking about. So $30, I mean, not to be $30, right? I mean, I could buy at 70 I could sell at 95 If the probability is 70% that the thing is going to expire in the money, okay? So let's look at this. If, there, if it's $70 and there's a 70% probability it's going to expire in the money, does that mean that there, and this, that's, uh, this should make some sense, but that should actually mean that there is a really good probability that it's going, because it's an expire in the money one, there's even greater probability that it's going to get to my strike. So if my strike was, you know, 1 point, I don't know, 84, whatever, okay, and it cost, you know, 70 bucks, and there's 70% chance it'll expire greater than that, then there's obviously a greater probability that it's going to get to 1.84, you know, or vice versa. So if it's thirty dollars, you know, on down the list. So it was probably a little stay above it. So let's look at it. So let's say you get out at ninety-five dollars. Let's just get rid of all this. Let's just say you make uh, twenty-five bucks, okay? Because you sold at ninety-five. All right, so you profit twenty-five dollars on the trade. So. Okay, that's that's good. I see what you're saying. Yeah, twenty five dollars, thirty bucks a day don't pay the bills. I agree. I understand that. That's one contract. Okay, that's also one trade. What's really cool about this is you can do as many or as little as you want to. If I do a hundred contracts on a trade on just one trade a day, let's just say I was profitable, then I would make twenty five hundred bucks. Would that pay the bills? <laughs> So don't get all worried about all that. Oh, you definitely have to have the collateral. It's not given to you for free, okay? But you can also make, you know, 200, 300% on some trades. That's part of trading. Yeah, you got to have money to trade. you got to invest. you got to risk your capital to do so. But let's go look at this. This is a, And this is not to imply what you're going to do, okay? But it is to show you the power of an account growing. So let's say you start with $500, okay? You're doing one trade a day to make 25 bucks, okay? And then now let's say that uh, this is day one. Let's just go with 20 days in the month, okay? So you don't trade on Sundays or something, okay? So 20 days in the month. You're at two. Bring this on down here. And again, this is not to be some sort of implied guarantee. This is just to show you that $25 a day actually is a lot of money. Now, let's just say you make $25 a day. You don't pull any money out. You don't have losses. Obviously, you know, we can go in for some losses in there and everything else. I just want to show you the power of how an account can grow. We're making $25 every day. We're going to do that. We're going to add $25. Bucks. We're not going to compound at all. We're going to do one trade a day and make $25. At the end of the month, we now have five hundred dollars, or we made five hundred dollars, right? We made a thousand bucks. Take that exact same formula, okay? And now we're doing fifty. Now we've made five twenty-five. So we can go in and we can do this month three, okay? So now what we're doing is we're doing twenty-five bucks for five hundred every five hundred dollars we have. Just one twenty-five dollar trade. Okay, and so actually I need to do this. Uh, actually, we'll do this. This plus that, and then I throw a little formula in there. I'm going to do the same cell. There we go. 
Okay. Now let's do a little repeat right here. Let's adjust this one each time. I know there's a better way to do this when I'm doing it right now, but it'll get the point across. Okay. So I'll bring that on down. So first you're making 25 bucks a day. Then you're making 50 bucks a day. Um, then you're making 100 bucks a day. That's another way to do it. Uh, right there. Okay. So how much profit now you're at $4,000. So this is actually really important. I'm glad you brought it up because a lot of people don't understand the concept that you really want to um, understand that you don't have to, and I don't mean this to you, I'm, we're all guilty, all right? You don't have to be greedy. You need to think about where I want to be in 12 months. So I challenge you to take this formula, making 5% a day for 20 days, and then making then at the brand new month, making 5% a day for 20 days, and do this math tonight just to see how it works out, see what happens. And yeah, I know there's liquidity, there's losses, there's, you know, taking profits, everything else, but just see how big that grows. Essentially, you're talking about an account doubling every month. Now, of course, you're not going to double your account every single month, but the numbers get really big really quick. $25 can get really big, okay? So, not saying to go and expect this. I'm just saying don't discount the simple ability to make $25. I've had people come to me, they're like, I want to make five grand a day. And I'm like, well, why don't you learn to make $10 a day first and then just do more? <laughs> okay, that's not even doing more trades. That's just adding on more contracts to the same trade every day. All right. Um, one more lesson about probability with the in the money and the out of the money and the percentage. So let's say you have a trade. This is a big concept, a 70%, 30%, okay? Let's say you have a system that is profitable 70% of the time and loses 30% of the time. This has nothing to do with the binary. Just the system you use works as well, okay? or at least has worked this well. And so you're like, okay, my system has, you know, been profitable 70% of the time. What is my expectation on the very next trade? Does that trade have a 70% probability of being profitable? If I have done a system for the last three years, okay, and 70% of those trades have one, does it, the next trade have a 70% ability, 70% possibility of being profitable. So the answer, again, is sort of a trick question, you know, and I don't want to, like, discourage y'all. I want y'all to actually think. The reason I want you to answer, I want you to think about it. Yes, yeah, so I can see people who have watched some of my, my money management videos. It is a 50-50. That sounds weird, okay? But it has a 50-50% probability of being in the, let's just say that over the next 100 trades, you still, Let's say on the next 100 trades, let's say that holds true. And out of the next 100 trades, 70% of them are profitable. Okay? Let's just say that actually does happen for you. On each individual trade, you have a 50-50 probability of it ending in the 70% probability bucket or the 30% loss bucket. Okay? Now, over the course of 100 trades, you know, maybe you did win 70% of them. This is so important because so many traders, they get this system that seems to win 70% or 80% of the time. And they think they have this great system. And that, that's a good, you know, it could be a good system. It depends on what the, your risk and reward and all that is. But then they think, I got a 70% chance of this trade winning, so I'm going to put in half my account. They don't realize 30% are going to lose. And you don't know what order they're going to come in. You always you have that expectation that I want to be able to survive through the losses to get to the profits. I don't know what we're going to come in, so I need to treat every trade like it's a 50-50. And that will save you so many bad mistakes in risk management. Like, man, this one, this is a sure thing. This is like 85%. I'm all in. You know. Um, I've done, you know, we've had 30 seconds, we had like, you know, and I've had a period of like two weeks, like every single trade, boom, 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 boom lines up. And then we have like two late days in a row that lose. And somebody's like, I blew my account out. I'm like, how? 
you were you've been on the service for the last two weeks and every trade well okay well I put all my money in because it's just been doing so well greet took over so it is important to trade a system that has either the appropriate profitability or the appropriate probability one of the two were the good mix thereof but psychologically you need to remember that you don't know and, and even realistically you need to go I don't know which bucket is going to land in on this next trade so therefore I don't need to risk it like I have a 70% chance, okay? I'm willing to risk it because I believe that out of the next 100 trades, 70% will be profitable like the last, say, 100 were, okay? 70 of those were. But I'm not going to go take that and apply it to this trade. I'm going to say over the next 100 trades, I'm willing to risk this money because I expect, say, 70% of those trades to be profitable. I don't know where they're coming. I want to survive to get there. I don't have infinite money. So therefore, I'm going to let it grow slowly because, again, $25, $50, whatever, can get big quick. Okay? Let's see here. Um. And, you know, like we have, you know, we have stuff that we do where we teach just the basic, basic trades, okay? So that was some stuff about probability, and all that actually ties back to in the money and out of the money, what's the probability that it will expire in the money, right? This, this one was at 8, now it's at 17. The bid ask is coming up. If it goes up a little bit more, that trade could double. We just need a few more ticks. Go from 8 to $16, okay? Uh, so, you know, it's, now it's $2 profitable. It had an 8% probability of expiring in the money, but, and I see it's moving fast, right? But it was already up. It was at 10 bucks. It was $2 higher than we were looking at buying it earlier. Okay? So, hopefully y'all grab that, that concept right there of what the probability of in the money is. Now, if you go on the sell side, let's just reverse that back over here for a second. And everybody understands that a buy contract has a that's out of the money, that's greater than where the market is, has a lower probability of profiting, right? So if I bought this contract, it has a lower probability. Understanding that, then I'll go in and, okay, so I need to, that's expiring in the money, it's not necessarily being profitable, but since it has a lower probability, I understand why it's cheaper, okay? And that obviously, the closer it gets to that price, the more time it has, the higher that price is going to go. The less time it has, the lower that probability is going to go. Okay, so that's the probability. And therefore, buying it out of the money can make more money, but the market does have to move in your direction. It has to move in your direction. Okay? If the market were to move down and... You know, then that trade would or stay flat, and out of the money trade would lose because it has to expire above the strike. So yeah, this is uh, we're beta in this right now, but it's uh, that's why it says alpha on it. Yeah, we're beta like doing a whole strike thing on Ninja where it feeds in. Um, but so like right there, I know that's going to be cheaper. I know it's out of the money. I know why it's cheaper because the probability of it expiring in the money is lower, not necessarily the probability of it profiting. Okay. Now, if I look at this, and I go, yeah, that's right, that trade didn't just profit. Uh, now, if I look at this trade, and I buy an in the money, so it's lower than the price, okay? So I buy like the 101.84. Okay, that trade expired in the money, right? So if I bought a lower strike, so it expired in the money for me, and I was profitable on that trade because I had a higher probability. It didn't have to move up. If I bought a lower price down here, and I bought like right here, but at a lower price, it could stay flat as long as it stayed above 10184. It could move up, or even move down a few ticks, and I could still be, a couple ticks, I could still be profitable. So I know my probability was higher of expiring in the money, therefore I paid more, I risked more. I also understand the market doesn't have to move for me to be profitable on this trade, just time needs to pass, because the less time there is till expiration, and it's, if it's above, the underlying market's above that strike, the higher the probability is it's still going to be above that strike because there's less and less minutes, and it's already above it. 
So if it stayed there and in the money, you could be profitable if nothing happens. Okay? Go up, you could be profitable. Go down, you could be profitable. As long as they don't get out too far. Or at least stay down too far. So that's where the out of the money comes in on its pricing on a buy side. That's where an at the money comes in on the buy side. That's where an in the money comes in on the buy side. The sell side is the the same thing, but it's just you gotta reverse all your statements. Okay? So when I sell a contract, what I'm saying is that the market will expire at or less than. Okay? And so we got that down. We already talked about that. And now, and remember on a binary, the price I paid, $14. I'm buying, so my risk is 14 to zero. My profit is say 14 up to you know 100, right? When I sell the price I, I pay, I put in on the trade. When I sell, that's the profit potential. So instead of it being the risk, like on the buy side, the quote is the profit potential. Notice how it says on here on the scanner, it shows you $94 has $94 of profit potential. $14 on the buy side has $14 of risk. So it's just opposite. So if I have a $94 profit potential on a trade, and there's a $100 value in a binary at most, what is my risk on the trade? I mean, it's, it's on the screen in front of you, but yeah, six bucks. So real simple, okay? So I'm risking $6, what's my probability of it being profitable? And this is where we can get a reverse every statement. Okay, so if like if the buy side was my probability of it expiring in the money profitable, or make it not profitable, in the money profitable, then my sell side, my risk, so in this case six dollars, just like my risk and the buy side, fourteen dollars, is my percent probability of it expiring in the money. Now again, I could sell at ninety-four, I could buy back at eighty, make a nice return. So that's just expired out. By the way, that's a nice benefit too, is it'll um, drop them out and then add the other ones back in. So the new ones will come online here in a second and just drop the old ones out so you don't have to hit refresh. See, there they go. It just fed in the live uh, 10 o'clock contracts for you. Um, and let's see here. All right. Um, so that's your in the money. That's your out of the money. Now let's talk about, um, we talked about how to use that $50 price for take profit. You know, buy at 8, sell at 43, sell, you know, sell at 92, buy back at 57. You can do the same thing for an in the money. Maybe you buy a 17, or let's, let's say you buy a, find a little better price one here. Let's say you buy a, I just want to get down here and find one that's normal. All right, 73 bucks just for the, this example. So those are plenty that are tradable, but just for the example. If I buy, you know, 74, 75 bucks or whatever, I could make up to 26, you know, dollars on the trade. Do I have to hold the trade till expiration on the losing side? Let's say I have a higher risk trade. I get out of the trade at, say, 95 if it goes up. As time passes, it'll collect premium, and it'll become worth more and more and more because less time, same price, higher probability it'll be in the money. But if it goes down to 101.80, what can I get out of this trade for? What can I exit for? Yeah, approximately 50 bucks, right? Give or take a few dollars on the trade. So I could make about 25, I could lose about 25, right? So give or take a few dollars in there, but just to get the idea. You don't have to be risking, now your max risk is 75, but you don't have to take the full loss, you can choose to exit, okay? Now it's a limit order, so you gotta place the limit order when it gets there, but you can choose to exit when it gets there. And I talk about that a lot more over on our site. Okay? So you could use a higher probability of expiring in the money trade without having to take, I'm going to say take on, because you are taking on the risk, but without having to accept the total loss if the market should choose to get against it. So just like you can lock in a profit if the market moves in your favor, you can also exit early to help cut a loss. Okay? And now you can have a 75% probability of expiring in the money trade but you could have a one-to-one -one or close to risk-reward ratio. Those are good odds, right? Putting that together. Um, everybody with me so far? And I know I got some questions, and I promise I'm not ignoring your questions. So I was trying to stay on track because it's so easy to go off track. 
All right, so we got what's in at the money binary. Uh, we got what's in the money binary. We got what's in out of the money binary. We got how probability factors into price. We talked about how you can enter and exit before expiration. Um, we went through some examples. Uh, now, let's see here. Um, now, one thing that's really important to remember is that you can enter and exit before expiration. Some people, when they come in, especially if they've traded on overseas binaries, they think, okay, well, so that's a two-hour binary. I have to buy it and hold it. Remember what I just told you? That won't work. Okay? It won't work, right? We, we proved that already. That's a probability. If the probability is anywhere near accurate, which they're incredibly accurate, they're not, like, randomly made up. They're, it's, it's, if you want to know the actual formula, just learn how to pull the delta of a call option of the same strike and same expiration. And you'll have the actual formula. And they have to know the ID and all this other complex stuff, but the formula is spot on. So there are trades I get into and out of 60 seconds later. There are trades I get into and out of five minutes later. There are trades I get into and out of three days later. Okay, pretty rare. Most of my trades are same day. I do have a few longer term trades. But most of my trades are, you know, anywhere from a few minutes to maybe 20 or 30. Okay, a majority of the time. Um, so... A question comes up, so does Natix offer 60-second trades? Uh, no, they don't, but yes, they do. So they do because you can get out and you can get out, you can get in and get out 60 seconds later. But this is a contract, and that's really a big difference. It's a contract. It's every day at 8 p.m., Natix is going to list nine contract strikes. They are going to be five ticks wide on the U.S. yen. The middle strike will be approximately where the price was about 10 minutes before expiration. And then they'll add five ticks uh, to the four above it, and they'll subtract five ticks from the four below it. And that is the contract that Natix has established as an exchange that buyers and sellers can come together and do. A 60-second binary is not a contract. It's a, where's the price at now? Okay, I'll take that. You know, it's, it's an over-the-counter negotiation. It's not an established, futures, regulated, you know, style contract, swap contract. So that's why they don't have 60-second expirations. But it doesn't mean you can't get in and out 60 seconds later. Um, you've got to learn how the trade works. You've got to make sure that there is enough movement. But if you're trying to buy it and guess the price in 60 seconds, you're not going to have that. Uh, but you are going to have the ability to know your money is in the U.S. You're going to know that you can withdraw your funds. You're going to know your funds are segregated. They're not considered part of Nadex's funds. So they're not a danger with a creditor. I mean, I can go on down the list. Um, you're going to have true price liquidity. You're not going to have any manipulation of expiration prices because you have an independent third party in the middle. I mean, it goes on and on and on and on. So there are certain things that we all want, but you got to go, what is that costing me, really? So, um, And they, they won't ever have them. So the lowest they will ever go is two hours. So I've confirmed that, okay? Um, let's see here. And let's see, what is, okay, so we got statements false, we got that. I'm just going through, I have a little checklist to make sure I cover everything with you. Uh, okay, advantage of an out-of-the-money binary is what? What is, what is the number one advantage? Now, there's two advantages, I guess you could say. But what is the, in my opinion, what, so let's say you're going to take profit at 25 bucks either way, in the money or out of the money, okay? So let's say you're going to take $25 either way. And let's say you're going to take a stop loss on an end of money binary, limiting your risk to 25 bucks. So if you're willing to take a stop loss, uh, take you know, losing $25 on end of money, and you're only going to put up $25 to the out of the money, and on both of them you're only going to go for a $25 profit. There you go. So no stop is needed. So that is the biggest advantage. You don't need a stop. You can go and put 25 bucks. It can fly way against you. If it comes back by expiration, you can be profitable. Okay. It's your number one advantage. Your number two advantage is that you uh, have the potential to make a lot more profit, even though usually I don't hold them. You know, I'd rather do a thousand contracts or whatever, a hundred contracts, and make you know thirty bucks a pop than I would hold those things to expiration and give up you know three thousand dollars personally. Um, now there are trades I do that are big trades, so we have certain trades around specific news announcements and things like that where I will do some pretty deep out of the money binaries, but it's, it's very on purpose. Um, I have an expectation of that movement. 
not just I think it's going to go up. Like I have an expectation it's going to go to that price. Okay. Um, disadvantage out of the money binary, it has to move. Right? you got to get above your price. Now, sometimes that could be, you know, 50 ticks away. It could be two ticks away. So sometimes, like, five minutes for expiration, you may be able to buy a binary for $10. If it moves two ticks in your favor, you can be profitable. Okay? So um, you don't have to have a lot of movement. You may have to have a lot of movement. But you don't have to have a stop in either case. And your profitability is much higher. It's up to, I want to say it's like almost 2,400% with fees is the, the most amount you can make on any binary. Um, but that's obviously a, like a $3 contract or whatever. Um, so in the money binary. So your profit potential is limited, but you should be taking profits anyway. Okay. It doesn't have to move. It can stay flat. It can move in your direction. It can move a little bit against you. You could still be profitable. Um, if you weren't using stops, not recommended. It could fly against you and come back up, and you could still be profitable. If it goes down and it hits your strike and you exit, then, of course, you would take a loss on the trade, but you'd limit your loss dramatically with an increased probability trade. Um, let's see. Question here. So, if I bought a $70 contract, the question is, can you show a buy and then sell? Okay. If I bought a 68.50, and then I got, like, so I got in the trade. This is a run demo. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I went in and I bought that contract. Okay, market just moved on me. But uh, line on it. All right, so let's say I buy this thing, and I'm just going to adjust it. Buy it at 74.50. Okay. Get filled on that trade. And then let's just say the market was moving down. Obviously, I can't show it unless the market moves. But I could have my trade in here. Maybe I put this in for $35. If I see it come down and hit the strike, I'm going to submit it. It's going to give me the best price available. So if it's at 50, I'm going to get 50. If it's at 45, I'm going to get 45. So it comes on down. I hit the order and get out of the trade. It's just I exit. That's all it is. So, But the way that I do it, again, is if it hits the strike, I exit. Okay. So just get out if it hits your strike. And you can learn, like I have a whole video on how to do that, how to do that really easily. Just uh, hop over to our website, and we have a whole course on it. Okay? Um, let's see here. Talked about all the advantages in the money. Uh, we talked about how to keep them at one to one. Um, you can do range bound. You can combine a couple things together. So we could go over here, and we could buy, we could, um, here's an example. I'd be able to do this. So if I bought this one and I sold this one right here, now I'm doing a range bound trade. We're going to talk about that here in a couple weeks. I'm going to go to nighttime range bound trading. But uh, it stays within this 10 tick range. I mean, it's a very low volatility time. If it stays within that range. I could bring in about 40 bucks on this trade right now, or about 30 bucks, I guess. What's that? 30? Yeah, about $30 on the trade. And if it goes against me, one side loses about 30, one side makes about 10. So I actually lose 20 and make 30. So now I have a greater than one-to-one -one risk reward ratio by exiting the trade if my strikes hit. It's about money management. And, um, yeah, you're definitely able to do uh, trades on the mobile app. Just hop on, you know, iTunes or Google Play or the Microsoft Store. I forget whatever the name of it is. My wife has a Microsoft account or phone. But, yeah, there's an index app for Microsoft, any kind of Android and Apple. Um Okay, so that's how I get in. That's how I get out. We have whole videos just showing you, okay? Like, the whole video is just literally how to use the platform, how to place an order. So you're right. Ah, come back. Right there. Platform tutorials. And in the platform tutorials, I even have a tutorial on the app. So I did this when I had an iPhone. Now I have, a like, a Galaxy Note 3 or I don't know whatever it's called. But uh, so I go in there and how to get in a trade, how to, you know, how the platform works, how to navigate. All that stuff is right here. Okay, and they also have all the filters on the scanner built right in. So like how do you use the scanner or how do you filter with it? All right. So what is premium? Let's knock that out. Okay. We talked about how binary options are priced. I'm gonna come back to best opportunity here in a second. Uh, premium is time. It is implied volatility. That's the two things that make up premium. That's why you can buy a contract that is already in the money, where the market's already greater than the strike that you're buying, saying, hey, it's going to be greater than this price. It's already greater than this price. Okay? And so that premium, 
that 20 bucks above 50, okay, is the real value, but the 50 bucks below it is the, the premium value, it's that time value. So you're going to put up the real value and you're going to put up the time value. I'm going to refresh my screen. Um, here, I'll bring it back up in a minute. Um, anyway, so the premium is going to be your value on your contract. And how do I put this? If I were to buy an insurance policy for 30 days on my car, and let's just say it decayed the same every single day, like what does time decay? So say I put 30 bucks up, and let's just say it's a dollar a day, so I give them $30, but in 15 days, I call Geico and I find a better price, and I switch, okay? I call them, like, hey, I want to cancel my policy, I just got new coverage, it's effective today. They're like, okay, we'll go ahead and give you a prorated refund. They're going to be 15 bucks back, Right? Didn't have a wreck, whatever, gonna get 15 bucks. Um, so it's a dollar a day of premium. That's it. It's gonna decay by a dollar every day. So if I were to go get my money back, then the insurance company made 15 bucks on time decay of that policy before it expired. I lost 15 bucks because I paid the premium. That's like a out of the money binary, right? But in the money binary, it's like I'm the insurance company. I'm the one billing, and every day that goes by that no wreck happens, the fly against my strike is a day, an hour, a minute, whatever, second that I collect that time decay. Now the reality is it actually decays not in a equal way. Um, what I mean is if you got, you know, say, you know, 30 days, it's not one dollar, you know, for 30 days. What's really gonna happen is it's gonna be like you know, five and then like four fifty and then you know four twenty five and then four. Okay, it's gonna get bigger and bigger. So that way, if you come back, you know, you only make maybe fifty cents right here. Maybe you make twenty five cents right here after the first minute. And then you make fifty cents. So and then you make say fifty five cents. And then you make sixty cents. And then you make seventy cents. You know, and it gets up higher and higher and higher until finally it's like there's only five bucks left. There's like a minute left till expiration. It's only two ticks away. But there's five dollars of premium in there still. Okay, so premium is going to decay faster and faster as it gets closer and closer, which means you're going to either collect it or pay it. And that that is what premium time decay is. It's just it's the time value of the contract. And are you the insurance company collecting it as it goes by, or are you the person buying the insurance, paying it as it goes by to hedge yourself? Okay. All right. So that's time decay. That's premium. I have a lot more videos on all of this where I walk through each one of these things and steps. Uh, so I'll let me throw up a chart, and I'm also going to go through and catch up on some questions that are posted. Okay. So I want to get to everybody's questions. And uh, okay. So. Okay, so Richard, so we got your question on how to know when to get out of a bot um, binary when it's close to the strike price. Um, let's see here. And let's see, I got a... Uh, um, Change this up. One more thing over here. Sorry. I'm going to pull this over so I can get all the questions because it's easy to skip them just the way this thing works. I don't want to skip any of them. Um, wow. All right. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, you can always sign up for a demo with, yeah, your other, yeah, <laughs> you can do that too. Um, at some point, um, may we go from a point of finding a trade on Ninja to find the best spread binary scanners to execute that trade until it's stopped out. It's much easier to understand when it is in one. Yeah, this really isn't an Apex webinar, Aaron. It's more, it's actually a Nadex webinar. So anything that you want to cover on Thursdays, just got to let me know. 
But um, on the Elite, I mean, you know where to buy. You know where to sell. So we teach you because we have, obviously, Forge Traders, Future Traders, CFD Traders, Binary Traders, Spread Traders. So we teach you exactly where to get in, where to set your take profits, where to set your stop loss. And But any questions you have, you need to ask, like, post them in the forum. Like, show me your trade and go, I don't know what to do here, or this is what I think I should do. It makes it a lot easier. Also, watch the um, the training videos on it. That will help a lot. So once you got first get the system down, because you have to have your rules. Like, on a chart, where am I going to get in? Where am I going to get out? Okay? And, for example, okay, this is a really, really simple strategy. Okay? Um, there's a lot of ways to do it, but let me just zoom in on one. So this is what I call my MVP, my momentum volatility predictor. All right? And so I look at this trade, and if the market is, you know, up in the upper half there of the expected um, range, so it's the expected channel is how far we expect the market to go on this hour. Okay? And I get a long signal right here. Then if I'm at sort of the expected move, I don't expect a lot more movement. So if I don't expect a lot more movement, I think the market's going to sort of flatten out at this point, then I would buy a, would you buy an out of the money or would you buy an in the money contract at that point? If the market was going up, you got a buy signal, would you want an in the money or an out of the money? In the money, that's right, because you don't expect a whole lot more movement. So on this exact same signal, I could go, okay, buy signal, boom, buy an in the money. There we go. Do it for current hour, and then I add in one simple rule, and I do it on 10-minute bars. Okay, if the market, if I have MVP, it's really simple. It's just 10 minute bars. The market has to close in the same direction as my signal. If I have plenty of room, I'll look at like a low risk out of the money. And I'll put a take profit for like, you know, 20, 25 bucks. If I want to go for more, then I may go in and do like, I may split my contract. So I'll do two or 10 or 100 or, you know, whatever. And I'll sell half at my risk. So let's say if I risk $20 on the other money, and I did, let's just say, two of them. Then I'll sell one of them at 40. So now if it does come back on my out of the money, you know, then I extremely, yeah, I still have the potential to make a lot, but I don't lose on the, you know, the trade as a whole. Okay, so that'd be like how I do like an in-the-money contract. Current hour, that would work great. All right, we go back, and I mean, you can you can look at this. It's, all it is is 10-minute bars, doesn't close in the direction of the signal. So right here, I do an out of the money, right? So I can target that, go for 20 bucks. It moved about a strike. One strike will get you about 20 bucks. So right there, because we got just about to the strike. Remember I said 47.53, just in case it doesn't quite hit it. So it moves up, and within like a tick, takes profit, falls back down. Good thing I had a set a take profit, okay? Um, four to five. Okay, so this is uh, something to add in, just to help you out. Between four and five o'clock, p.m., when all the indices are shut down, okay, Forex is rolling over. There's basically just about nothing open. You expect a lot of movement. No. So even though I have a lot of potential movement left, do I probably want to do an in the money or an out of the money? So probably an in the money or maybe an at the money, okay? So you could also do at the monies. At the monies move really fast, by the way. The bad, the bad part is like you can make twenty five dollars really quick because they move fast, but they can also move against you and you can lose fifty. So they're harder to manage risk on. Now right here we got a short, we got a down close. Okay, so boom, it closes down. I choose an out of the money. It goes down and literally just in the last few minutes, last ten minutes, it actually pops down when it hit my take profit on that trade. So you can just we can go over it again and again and again. Okay, that one would have went in, you would have bought, it closed up. We're still in the bottom half, which is now the money, it didn't move, that trade lost. Uh, this trade sold, it's out of the money because you got plenty of room. Boom, it does come down, it hits it, there you go. So that one's obviously way above the expected range. We're doing in the money contract, oscillates around a little bit, expires in the money. You know, right there, sell, 10 minute down close. We're out of the range, we're definitely going to do the in the money, we sell that, boom, it expires in the money. So, I mean, real simple. I'm not, again, this is not about past performance. It's not trying to whatever. I, just, I want you to see how I could use an at the money or an in the money or an out of the money on the exact same system.
But the way I determine it, okay, like my system says, if sell signal and down close, then sell. If up, you know, signal and, you know, up close, then buy. Current hour only. Okay, cool. But what tells me what contract I should do? Well, the scanner can help me find the contract if I know what contract I want to do, but I have to know what contract I want to do. So the contract I want to do is going to be based on reading the market. So I look at the range of the market, and I'm like, yeah, we sort of, you know, we've exceeded it, or we haven't exceeded it at all, or what time of day is it? Okay, so, you know, we're down here, we're definitely past the mark, so we need to definitely do an end the money. I'm glad we did, because look at this, it bounced back around, and the trade is profitable, because we did the end the money, because we're already way down here, exceeding the down move. I don't expect it to move any further. So by looking at a proper expectation of movement, helps me choose an out-of-the-money and in-the-money binary. Does it make any sense, under any circumstance, to buy this contract right here? I mean, not knowing what's going to happen. Okay, if you have no idea what's going to happen. But you do have a realistic expectation. So we're putting the expectations for every hour. Okay? If you have no expectation of the market getting to any of these three strikes, does it make any sense to buy the out of the money binary for those strikes? You got to buy or sell. Or is that just sort of throwing money out the window? So, yeah, so you want to have, like, it's out the window. You want to have, like, why am I buying it? Not just, oh, I like the risk-reward. Not just, oh, it's an out-of-the-money, so it qualifies. Okay? Or it's an in-the-money, so it qualifies. Does it make sense? Why would I think the market's going to keep going? Well, you got a sell signal. But has it moved how far it usually moves that hour of the day of the week? If it does, it's, it's probably just going to chill out for the next hour. If anything, it's probably going to come back in this little, like, darker red zone. That's the close. So, like, this is how far we expect it to move from high to low. And this little darker red zone, that's how far we expect it to close. So, if it closed here, we expect the next close to be about right here. And it is. Close there, we expect it to close there. So, it's not that it's always going to be spot on, but it's, you know, it's pretty accurate. Um, if nothing, it gives, it gives you an objective method. If nothing else gives you an objective method to determine proper strikes. Somebody says, I think, based on, like, magnet pricing or whatever, that the market's going to hit this price. Well, then I'm going to say, great. Sounds like you got a good trade. Looked at your volume analysis. That looks awesome. Let's go ahead and um, let's try to you know make that a little further out binary because we need to make sure that our price is within that range. So if I think it's going to get all the way up there down there, how long do I think it's going to take to get there? Okay. So that way I don't choose a binary like you're right. It went there, but it expired before it got there. So. Like, all right, well, ah, four hours still isn't enough. I need to add more time. If I think it's going to get there, I need more than four hours because that's how, like, it shouldn't really get lower than this point in four hours. So I can keep expanding that zone out until I get it. Okay? Um, let's see, uh, speed. Okay, we talked about speed before in a couple of our webinars. How many binaries are going to move really, really fast if they're close to being at the money? Like, there's sort of a range, you could say. And if we go in and if I grab this, let's say, let's move this over here for a second. Like, there's sort of a, what I call a speed curve on the price. Okay? And then we'll grab this one. We'll just turn it around. There we go. All right. So let's say we have two hours. Okay? And the more in this zone it is, the closer it is to the center, the faster it's going to go. Okay? The further out it is from the center, the slower it's going to go. Meaning, like, the further that strike is. So it's at $50. That binary is going to move, like, 20 30 bucks in, like, one strike move. Okay? Very fast. If it's at 70, it's going to have to maybe move two or three strikes to move like 5 or $10, okay? The closer you get to expiration, the faster all this speeds up. So now the, the extreme speed is like right down here. We're starting to have a bigger move, like only a few ticks will get you to that extreme speed really fast. So 
there's really not an area where you have slow speed as you get closer and closer to expiration. The further you are from expiration, the slower that the binary will move. Um, the further you are from the strike, the slower the binary will move. So the further you are from the strike and the further you are from expiration, the slower the contract will change price. Um, let's see here, and then let me add in. And I, I do see all the questions. I'm trying to get to them. That's why I'm going through each one of these. I'm answering a question as I get through each one. Some good ones, though. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so let me set that back to my normal settings. All right, so um, let that load up. And I mean, and I have a lot of different charts. This is just this is just one really really simple system. Um, but at 6 a.m., the expectations. So I could actually probably just open it. Expectations of high to low. Where is that at? So I can tell you what tomorrow's is. Um, let's see here. Where is that? All right, um, let's go into 6 a.m. right now. So 6 a.m. to 7 a.m., our expected move high to low is 7 ticks. So pretty small on USCN. Um, okay, so let's see. We got that. Let me go down. All those questions. <clears throat> um, when is it too late to get out? Good question. Okay. Um, well, you're always allowed to get out as long as there's somebody on the other side of the trade. Okay. Uh, market makers generally don't make markets in the last two minutes of expiration because the probabilities are pretty impossible to calculate. Okay. Um, I have seen one of the market makers occasionally making some markets in the last couple minutes. Um, but really, like two to three minutes for expiration, you're not going to be able to get out. Like, just don't expect it. Now, you can. You can put in an order, and a market maker may take it, and another trader may take the trade. So you're not forbidden from getting out. A lot of people think, like, they're forbidden. You're not forbidden from getting out of the trade. It's just, um, there we go. Uh, whenever you do the trade, you want to make sure somebody's on the other side, and you got to make sure there's a bid offer. You know, I mean, if you're trying to get out of a trade, and it's, there's no bid offer because it's all the way like at three, you know, that's not going to help you a whole lot. Um, but I'd have to see the specific trade with a screenshot of the uh, NetX platform from when you're talking about. Like you said, you had a problem getting out at 15 minutes. I, I haven't really had problems getting out at 15 minutes for expiration. So I don't know what you're trading. I don't know what the volume was. I don't know what contract it is. I don't know what price you're trying to get out for. Um, you got to make sure you're trying to get out for the prices listed. Um, I'll see a lot of people that think they can't ever get out of a trade, and they're trying to get out. They're trying to get out of the buy price on a sell. I'm not saying you specifically, and that's why I'm not mentioning your name. But um, you know, just I'll see people all the time try to do that, and like it'll be like a 85 by 95, and they'll try to get out the 95 on a sell. It's like, well, the sell is 85, so you're not gonna get filled unless you take the bid price, the left side. If you want an immediate fill, you got to get out at the market price if you want an immediate fill. So sell, left side, buy, right side. Um, so yes, I do not hold to expiration. Um, these indicators are in our toolkit. So you can try out, they, we have trials for everything. You can check it out. Um, let's see here. Um, So if my trading expenses are 200 bucks a month, how many times do I need to make a, how many trades on average do you need to make profit to cover a trading expense of $200, whatever that expense would be? Uh, how many times do you need to make a profit? Well, you need to make 200 bucks. I don't, I don't know how to answer that question for you beyond, I mean, you just need to make 200. So that's either one trade making, or two trades making, I mean, it could be one spread trade making 200 bucks. It could be um, a binary trade. 
making twenty dollars on ten contracts. It could be ten binary trades making twenty. You know, you could do ten binary trades making twenty dollars a piece. So you could do ten every hour. You could do one every hour for the next ten hours, make twenty dollars. You could make two hundred bucks. I mean, I'm not like if your goal is to make two hundred dollars, there's a lot of ways to skin that cat. Um, let's see here. If it can't, if yeah, if your expense can't pay for itself, then don't pay the expense. Um, let's see here. Going on down. So what are the core trades that you do every day? Uh, they're a beginner trade. They're very much a beginner, beginner, beginner trade. So it's a it's basically teaching people how to get in a buy trade and set a take profit, and the ability on how to can like once like basically put in a buy trade if not filled how to cancel a trade, put in a buy trade if filled, put in a take profit order, adjust that take profit order if necessary, put in a sell trade, and if not filled then submit a cancel order to free up the capital. If filled then set a take profit order, and then if it needed adjust the take profit order. It's literally just a it's a get you going trade like one time a day. It's a that's what it's there for. So obviously we encourage everybody to go way past that. That's just a core like the the most fundamental thing is just learning how to place the trades. So it's a real simple. That's why there's only one a day. It's what's really simple. It's just to help people get accustomed to in your trades. Like at 11 a.m., we're like, okay, we're going to look at buying the NASDAQ at this price. We put in a buy at 57, and let's say the market's at 65. Then you put in a buy at 57, you wait for it to get filled. If it doesn't get filled, it runs up to 95 to our take profit. Then we'll say, hey, I canceled the order out. It never got filled. If it falls down and hits 57, then, you know, I mean, it doesn't matter if the price is at 57 when it comes out. It just matters because it get to it. When it does get to it, we'll send out a, hey, set a take profit order. We got filled. Then it'll move to it. So it's meant to be really slow, really simple, and just get you accustomed to placing orders because, I mean, you have to start somewhere. So it gives you a very simple way to get started. It's nothing you want to go, like, crazy with. Um, let's see. It's just seasonality and technical analysis combined. Um, let's see. Got that. Good job. Lots of good questions. Good answers by all. Um, Gary, got you on how to set that take profit, how to get out of a trade and take a loss. Robert got you on. We got the mobile app. They do not. We they have a mobile app. Um, Serini asked, uh, "Let's say I like to trade euro dollar. Where would you go to have any idea of the coming week forecast?" Uh, well, I guess define forecast. Define what you're doing. I mean, do you need a week for intraday binaries? Do you need a week for daily binaries? So, I mean, we show you how to trade intraday, daily, and if you want to go weekly, you could. It's a to me, it's an absolute waste of time uh, because you trade more time to make more money, to get a larger move. A binary is with 100 bucks, whether it expires in five minutes or five days. I don't have to spend any more time on a weekly than I do on an intraday. I don't have to set up my computer any more time, either way, okay? Uh, obviously, the strategy is to find how much time I set up my computer. But why would I wait five days to wait make what I can make in five minutes? Unless there's a really good reason for doing it, and it is much harder to predict where a market's gonna be the more time you go out from expiration. Why? Because more events happen fundamentally. So it gets exponentially more and more difficult to actually trade the further out you go in time. But as far as like if you want to trade your dollar, yeah, we have people to trade your dollar all the time. You know, hop on our forum, hop on our site, we'll be glad to help you out. But you're gonna want expectations of movement, you're gonna to want to know how far it's gonna move each day. You can even plot these things to go out for a week. You can go in fourteen forty times seven, you know, and plot it out. Um hopefully that helps. Um is the strike price the same as an open price? No. A strike price is the, the contract itself. So it's the actual contract over on Nadex, okay? So on Nadex, like whatever the price is that's listed, if it's greater than 1.3840 or, you know, whatever. Um, let's see. I don't know why this thing zoomed way out. But uh, there we go. So the price is $86. Like, so if I bought it for 86, that's the price I opened the price for. The strike is greater than, it's the contract itself, greater than 101.80 or greater than 101.60. Or if I'm selling, it's it's opposite of that. I'm saying it, that's a false name, so I'm saying it won't be greater than, it'll be less than or equal to. The strike is the contract name. The open 
if you're buying a contract, would be the opening price of buying the contract. The open on a bar is the first price printed on when a bar opens itself. I'm not sure if that's what you're asking, Norman, but I hope I got it for you. If not, let me know. Alex, uh, what is an iron condor, an iron butterfly, et cetera, how to use them? Um, an iron condor is where you buy a spread below the market and you sell a spread above the market, and you do that to collect premium on well, spreads, right? Um, let's see here. I don't know why this thing's like this is zooming like crazy. Um, here we go. Grab my other mouse. See if that fixes the problem. Huh. Okay. So if you go over to the Apex website, we have a news section. And we usually do iron condors on news specifically. Um, if you go to the news trading plan, and I think we need to update something, but I'll show you where it is so you can get it if it's not done already. Um, and then go over here to the month view. Yeah, there we go. We'll go on the first. Okay. So right here, I actually have a list of Iron Condor trainings. It gives you, like, this is a YouTube video I made. This is a webinar I did. This is a live walkthrough, like, a, a, on my live radio show. Me doing it. So I teach you how to do Iron Condors. Um, I, if you just search in the forum, Butterfly, you're going to find plenty of videos on that, on how to do those. Um, here in a couple weeks, I'm going to be doing a webinar on how to do them at night. So, uh, but... Yeah, I mean, an iron, an iron butterfly is collecting premium, an iron condor is collecting premium. So I'm going to buy a spread below the market, I'm going to sell a spread above the market. At the lower spread, usually you'd sell the lower spread, and buy the lower spread. And that's when people complain about spreads, like, oh, it doesn't move, and I'm paying all this premium. It's like, well, then collect it, you know? But you can be on either side. You don't have to, it's not like the market maker can be the only person that takes the other side of the trade. You can take the other side of the trades. Binary um, butterfly, iron butterfly, that's where, like, say if I... Oh, let's, an example. Um, let's go over here. Let's just say if I bought this strike and sold this strike, saying that by expiration it was going to remain in between these two prices. So I'd be instead of buying the out of the money and selling the out of the money, I'd be, which would be a strangle. If I bought the in the money and sold the in the money, that'd be a iron butterfly. And you do it for collecting premium on range bound of markets. Um. The Wall Street 30, oh, well, it would look different. So it means, you know, how you pull it up. If we go and pull up the Dow, okay, so the Dow is YM09-14 for September future contract. Or M or, you know, whatever. Um, whatever it's at, right? I can't even think of the symbol at the moment. But let's see here. So that's the Dow. So down, sell, signal, sell. Obviously, I mean, I do it in the money, boom, it drops down, you take profit. Buy, up, close, cool. Let's go ahead and buy now the money. Boom, flies up, take profit. So sell, we didn't get it down close. No trade, good thing, because it moved up. Um, market's not open, you don't have an intraday, you don't have an expiration right there. I need to adjust that. Let's see, what should that be? Yeah, that's the issue. I'm like, where are the nerve strikes? Ah, well, I'll fix it later. My keyboard is stuck. Um, <laughs> I don't want to fix it while we're on the webinar. But, yeah, so you can see, like, we don't do it there. It's a bias, an up close. It's actually, a, even though it's a really small hour, I mean, it would be that. But there's just no strike because it's not... They don't have those at night yet on the indices. Go back over here. Daytime hours. So down close. Nope. It's up close. So no trade. Let's see. Up close. Yep. You got the top range. So doing in the money binary. You know, if it gets again right, they're 30 points wide. So you'd, and in the money would basically be probably like at 7 0, would be my guess. Um, if I plotted it up, I could fix it for you. But um, so that. Drop down, came back up. It may have been lower than that, depending on what the exact strike was. That's why I like plotting them on there. But um, anyway, so that's, you know, you could do it on whatever. Um, but that's just a really, really simple strategy. I mean, we have more stuff that's more advanced. Um, 
So uh, the strike thing's in alpha. It's not public yet because it's it's not accurate yet. <laughs> so I'm going to release some of the two that's not working all the time accurately. But uh, when I got it, I'll definitely put it out there. So it'll be part of the toolkit, the Ninja Turtle toolkit, that, uh, the Apex toolkit. Um, let's see here. FX CM connection. Okay, if you're having a Ninja Turtle issue, I'm, I'm not going to solve that for you on a, a webinar, Rob. <laughs> if you're having some uh, platform and data feed issue, you're going to set up a ticket. I'm sorry. Um, so especially, it's not, it's not an Apex webinar. Um, let's see. I do all different systems. It depends on my schedule. So if I was saying I'm just doing one system for six hours every day, that'd be one thing. But if I'm not, Dan, I don't really have it up there. But we do post all the traits where you can check them out. And I teach you exactly how I do the system. So it's not like, well, Daryl has this third guru sense. Um, sort of our motto is don't follow the guru, but become the guru. So teach you how to actually know how to do the system. And uh, my days vary too much, so it wouldn't even be an accurate reflection for you to base any any kind of judgment call on. Um, and I'm doing all sorts of things. I'm doing. I'm hedging. I'm throwing in futures, etc. Uh, Marana, if you want to check out our charts, I mean, to get Ninja Trader itself, it's free. We have the thing for free, free data feed, free Ninja. Um, if you want to access the toolkit, we have that on a trial. Um, Uh, there is no such thing as best. What's the best? What's the best system? You know, like everybody wants that answer. Me too, right? Uh, it comes down to the trader. What hours are you trading? What instrument are you trading? What settings are you using? But the ones that I develop or what we work out go through a lot of battle testing by a lot of traders before I ever teach them to anybody. Um, so I mean, I'm very happy with all of them. <laughs> but uh, it depends upon you and what you're trading, what time you're trading, what settings you're using, and I mean. Defining best system is a pretty, it sounds so simple, but it's, if it was just buy or sell and just between these hours and just one market, that's very simple. But if you start adding in, you got multiple contracts, and like I said, I, well, I'm going to choose an in the money here, I'm going to choose an out of the money there, I'm going to do this, you know. Uh, the scanner, i got multiple choices, it's a little bit more complex. But we do teach you to walk through it step by step. Um, we're doing a strangle. How far out of the money each direction do you choose? So... Um, you're asking about the dollar franc new trade in the morning. Oh, I'm not doing a strangle on the dollar franc new trade in the morning. I'm doing the opposite of that, actually. So if you go over and look at my dollar franc uh, trade, let's see if it's pushed it up. Yeah, I already got it up there. Good job, Caleb. Um, but so CP, C, the franc PPI news is being reached at 315. We're going to find an iron condor on the dollar franc. If we can get 35 bucks, we'll be happy. I don't expect it to move more than. 35 ticks, and most likely, like nine out of the last 12, if a little not more than that, um, moved less than 20 ticks. So I would not strangle that at all. Like, period, no strangle. Rarely do I ever do strangles. I usually, if I do anything like that, I do straddles, but I rarely ever will touch a strangle. So it's a uh, there's very specific trades. If you've been with Apex for a while, you know which ones I do them on, but because I'll announce it when I do them, I'll do them on the radio. But usually I do straddles using spreads, or I use iron condors using spreads for news. So if you choose an out of the money on this on both sides, I mean, they're going to be 10 ticks wide. I've got 4 o'clock. They're going to be 20 ticks wide for a 7 o'clock. It's, it's going to be a rough trade. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Daryl, uh, binaries look a lot safer than trading futures and that you know what your profit and or loss, maximum profit and maximum loss, okay? Because you could get out on the loss, you could get out on the profit. Um, whereas futures, you, the losses could be huge, yeah, but the profits can also be huge. So you got to balance that out. Um, I wouldn't compare binaries to futures. I compare spreads to futures because binaries are like the delta of a call option, all right? Spreads are more like a Friday expiration, you know, call option itself or put option. They're more like that. So they're a lot more like the market. Um, in both cases on Nadex, your risk is defined, your max profit is defined. But it's definitely safer, 100%, in the sense of there is a maximum profit. You can't keep moving your stop down, right? 
Like it's not going to get any worse than that. You can put on more contracts, but you can't keep lowering your stop, lowering your stop, lowering your stop, or not putting a stop, and or a flash crash happens, or you know whatever. And you can't ever get a margin call. So the sense of you have more defined risk, you have you have defined risk, and you can't change your stops on yourself, and um, all that. Then definitely it lowers your risk. So, but again, I wouldn't do binaries to futures. I would do more spreads to futures for comparison. Um, okay, I think I got everybody's questions. If I didn't, post it now or post it in the forum. <laughs> so um, I'll, I'll try. I got to hop on like three calls right after this. So we'll see if I can do that one at 9 o'clock over in the pit. But uh, what do we have on there? What do you mean the Aussie dollar 9 o'clock trade? I'm not quite sure what you're talking about. I don't see a nine o'clock trade. Like we have Frank PPI. Yeah, this is be aware. This is not a trade, so I didn't tell you to do anything. It says be aware of the movement. So see how there's no plan, there's no iron condor, there's no straddle, there's no strangle, there's no max risk minimum profit. That's a be aware event. It. it didn't tell you not to trade. This is it's it's. Don't get caught off guard that they're going to release policy meeting minutes here at nine, you know, nine thirty. It's not telling you not to trade. It's just not telling you a news-based trade. So, so there's no specific. Like I, I can't give you stats on something that has no numbers. It's a minutes report. It's what they said. So there's not a forecast on a number. There's not an actual on a number. So the way you use be aware is just to be aware that there's an event coming out and you want to be aware that it's happening so you don't get caught off guard in your trade. That's that's how you use it. So if it says iron, you know, like there's a color chart at the bottom, stuff like that. But yeah, that's the only one tonight. That's just a be aware trade. So the other trades in here, they're pretty simple. I mean, if you just, you got to learn the iron condor to do it. But if you'll follow the webinars up here, most of these are going to be iron condors. You just follow those videos right there. I'll show you how to do it. Um, but yeah, we can do but you can do butterflies, trade reversals, deviation levels, spike reversals, in the money, out of the money, at the money. You can do double binaries, um, you know, strangles. So there's there's a lot of trades. Premium collection. There's expiration premium collection. There's expiration trend collection. We have Apex Profit Poppers. Um, we got momentum scalps. I mean, there's a lot of trades you can do. So that are very defined systems. Um, next week, we're going to cover trading Nadex binaries in any market condition. Okay? So we'll talk about binaries in flat markets. We're going to talk about butterflies a little bit more. We're talking about strangles. Okay? Uh, we're talking about the news a lot more next week. So we're going to be diving into the news. So if you're curious about that, then definitely next week uh, you want to be on that webinar because that's what I'm going to be going into is how to use binaries in relation to news. Let's see. Ed asked a question. Okay, this is one of my last questions. I'm going to have to wrap it up. Um, on a sell, you lose the whole $100. On a buy, you lose the cost only if you let it expire. Okay, I, I'm guessing you're talking about binaries. And the entire statement is inaccurate. On a buy, the most you can lose is the price you pay. If you pay 40 bucks, you could lose 40. If you sold a binary for 40 bucks, the most you could make is 40, you could lose only 60. If you sold it for 80, the most you could lose would be 20 and you can make 80. So in no case would you be able to lose the whole 100 because you can't sell or buy for 100. Because nobody can take the opposite side of a trade that they can't make anything. You could say your, your risk is technically capped out at 100, but nobody can fill you at 100. But you'll notice you can't buy at 95. You can, or you can't, sorry, you can't buy at 100. You may be able to buy at 95, but nobody's going to sell to you. They'll sell you at 95 because at least they can make five bucks. But nobody's going to sell you for 100 because they can't make anything. They'll be down fees. So a sell, the risk is $100 minus the price you sold at. A buy, the risk is the price you bought at. So definitely, um, and, and everybody else who's new, I highly, even if you know you think you got it, I highly recommend, I mean, I spend a lot of time making these videos, they're all free. 
take the time. Don't discount them because they're free. I'm trying to help you out, okay? Watch these basic binary videos so you have the buy and the sell side correct. This is nothing like over-the-counter binaries. If you take anything from those markets into this, you're wrong. And I'm, I know of the kind of binaries, and I'm not trying to be combative. I'm just trying to tell you, like, if you take any of that knowledge here on the buy or sell side, you'll have it completely backwards. Because every time I've worked with a trader who's tried to justify and make that happen has realized that, wow, this is completely different. So it's just buy is above, sell is at or below. The risk is the price you buy at. On the sell side, the risk is $100 less the price you buy at. Okay. So there, there's nothing about holding it to expiration that's going to impact that number. Um, so yeah, we have a lot of live trades. Just check under the Apex section. We got live trades. I have live trades posted on there. And I'll do them on the webinars. Sometimes I'll do them on radio shows. Sometimes I'll do them in the room. Sometimes I'll take screenshots. Sometimes. So... My main thing is to empower you to be a trader. I'm not. I'm not into a, a spoon feeder. I wanna. I wanna help you. I mean, I'm a trader. I'm committed to trading. And if you wanna learn how to trade, I'm glad to help you out. All right. Well, you all have a great night. I hope you picked up a few tips and tricks along the way, and um, you know, hope you got down some you know understandings of in the money, out of the money, at the money, and probabilities, and take profits and stops, and uh, just how to put all the pieces together, and it'll get you going. Help you, you know, hope, hopefully help you wrap your mind around it a little bit more and uh, just keep chewing, you know, don't try to eat the whole cow at a time, take it one bite at a time. And uh, and let me know if you have questions in the forum. You know, I'm sure I, I probably have like 20 questions I haven't got to yet. I got to catch up on. And, uh, you know, right there in the questions, trading question forum. And that should get you going. All right, y'all have a great day.